everybody. Welcome to What Drives Us, episode 475 for Wednesday, November 23rd. Happy, happy. Thanksgiving Eve. Yay! That it is. My name is Russell Frost. I am happy to be your host. And is that a cattail? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm happy to be your host of Cattails and this excellent panel uh, for this week's adventure to advance tech mobility and sustainable energy. Oh, that's a whole cat, too. It's attached to a kitty. A, <laughs> right, a, get out of here. We've all got our small creatures. <laughs> it's, it's Fluffy Cat Wednesday on What Drives Us, folks. Thank you. Let me introduce Maybe. this amazing panel so we can get on the road because we have a ton of stuff to talk about. Um, we do. No, no, no actors under 18 on camera during the show, Casey, because, mm -hmm. yeah, you see, all of a sudden I'm going to be violating child labor laws and, you know, <laughs> ever sad card yet. <laughs> she should, right? So I've seen that the, all through the last show. The person here holding his beautiful daughter, our uh, Mr. Supercharger, Casey Green. Speaking of superchargers, I'm going to be abusing the hell out of the superchargers, trying to use a six by 12 U-Haul trailer all the way through the south, southeast and mid-Atlantic region on Thanksgiving Eve and Thanksgiving Day. We're going to see how that goes. <laughs> ah. hmm. Wow, I'm sorry about that. Recipe for disaster. I take, I take, I take up five parking spaces. <laughs> Unless there's a nose in. Then I take up a parking space in half an aisle. <laughs> You're not the only one going to be eating some stuffing. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> and uh let's see my friend in boulder colorado he is the founder of boulder hybrids where you should definitely have your hybrid or electric vehicle worked on if you live anywhere near the front range mr paul guzik hey hey happy uh turkey day to turkey day for those of you who don't do turkey tomorrow <laughs> whatever it is day. you're feasting on i hope it is wonderful mm -hmm. Unless it's human flesh, then I hope it tastes terrible because you're a cannibal and we're not going to celebrate you on this show. You're, okay? you're anti-cannibal? Wow. Jeez, I am, just to alienate half the audience. I, <laughs> you're so <laughs> that, that That many. That's like, wow. Or the audience that small. <laughs> exactly. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Patrick Connor with the very interesting mm. view of our demographic viewer <laughs> listener. Um, and I don't think half of you are cannibals, but he's a smart guy. I'm not going to argue with him. Uh, by the way, my friend in the Northwest, Mr. Patrick Connor. Hello. Can you be a cannibal, a repressed cannibal? Like, I, I don't eat human flesh, but, you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> a vegan <laughs> cannibal? Circumstances what? are just right. <laughs> what? Are we getting, did you just whatever cannibalism? <laughs> <laughs> Which is especially funny because I'm vegetarian. It, but, it, uh... <laughs> well, she is yeah, a writer, director, an actor, an activist, and co host of this show, Georgia McKenzie. Well, hi, everybody. I've been a little AWOL, but uh, you know, I, I really feel Russell, you, you don't want to slander the possible zombie demographic that mm. we in our audience. That was the next place I was going. What about their needs? Think about them. <laughs> Happy indigenous they, they can go to Zombie now. Island. I, mm -hmm. I hate zombies. Just like I hate vampires. Russell. I, so I'm biased. not fun. So biased. Uh, and last and certainly not least, a man who I'm sure stands with me in zombie hatred, Mr. Mark Coughlin. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, or as I like to call it, Thursday. <laughs> uh, how canadian oh mark i already cool. had my turkey day hope you yeah, that was, that was like as well tomorrow they, they couldn't even wait they couldn't even wait for thanksgiving they're like ah, it's time for turkey let's do it now yeah get it over with get it early so uh my apologies to all the viewers out there this week uh this horrible video that you're seeing from me is because i've updated my apple system which has invalidated my camera control Yay! <laughs> so you're kind of stuck with uh, High Key Russell, which is not necessarily where I look best. But as I said, we got a ton of news. Let's get started. Um, uh, I, two personal notes. Uh, let's see. So I was at the Prius reveal last week in Los Angeles. Bum, I've bum, seen, bum. I've touched, I've sat in. I actually opened and did a little bit of this assembly, not very much. Um, the Obviously, the uh, uh, the big chance to look at in in the vehicle, drive it, 
uh, and hopefully get some more information, more technical information than we already have, uh, will be coming sometime in the next few weeks uh, when Toyota does its first drive event. Uh, I don't know that I'm going to be there. We'll see. We're hoping, but you know, it could it could happen? Um, Any anyway, tools? They started shooing you away. <laughs> it's yeah yeah I, he was looking for an electrical it. plug and they're like we don't do that here oh snap <laughs> it, it's uh yeah it was uh, nonetheless uh the new prius is is beautiful uh being one of the people who fought for more than a decade and a half against the other prius was ugly i i'm it, it stresses me a little bit to to this one does look good so pretty now it's so pretty i'm like it was fine before it was a perfectly <laughs> fine car okay you can like that one and think this one is nice also yes yes so um uh, there it is uh new mpg um they've clearly they've unified the body between the prime and the standard prius uh which they still don't have a good name for um it, they prius used to be retro they used to be two different things. Um, it looks nice. It's uh, it really, honestly, this comes down to price and specs for me uh, to be interested. Uh, the Prime will have uh, a, a vaguely unstated range, which everyone who knows anything about anything uh, is saying is going to be 40 miles of plug-in range. Why? Well, there's a whole host of incentives that kick in at the 40 mile range, Wait. which Toyota has been very coy about saying out loud. They the only say that it's a... are about the battery's size, not the range, right? Well, I mean, well it, related, it changed, it, it changed uh, for the new program, didn't it? Oh, yeah. Uh, I d yeah so it well, used to be and, 16 kilowatt hours for the old program. But it has to be built in America to get the rebates, right? Mm hmm. Not until what 2025 now? Didn't they push that out? Yeah, they get they get like a year or two free. Uh, so so the Prius Prime and the one without a plug. There's the names. <laughs> the one without a plug. There we go. So the Prime uh, anyway. Hybrid. There's there. If uh, Toyota uh, uh, graciously nods their head, uh, I should have much more uh, technical information, pricing information, and driving experience uh, in the next few weeks. If not. I'll just be here talking trash about them because that's all I can do. I don't have I don't have better numbers. The thing uh, I, was I look forward for... to hearing from you and John B about oh, what they've done with the four wheel drive system this time around mm. on on the various in, uh, iterations. <laughs> Especially if you're in Colorado, four wheel drive is very popular there. So uh, the thing I was hoping for that did not happen was that they would ditch the one without a plug, that it would be prime only, and that would be that they would go to. Uh, lithium batteries, plug-in architecture, and 35 or 40 miles of range is, you know, fine as long as every two years they're upping that number. Um, so that's what I was hoping for and did not did not get it. Yeah, because so. they've they've got Ravs, Highlanders, Corollas, exactly. Siennas, yes. everything else as a hybrid. So if you right. really don't want a plug-in vehicle, buy a Corolla. Right, yeah. and make or the, you can do like the those volt line, lessies. Yeah, you can do like those volt lessies and just never plug it in. Yeah. Right. You don't have to plug it in and you just have a larger battery pack for regen and other things and keep the Prius name as the, the one that goes before the one that is their advanced technology leader, because already today, the RAV4 hybrid outsells the Prius. So, I mean, it's not even the Prius is not even their biggest selling hybrid. So I was really hoping that they would do something bold like that. And well, once again, I'm disappointed in Toyota. <laughs> I think Paul Guzik, I think that, all Prius battery packs are now lithium ion. They they were vague about it. Yeah. But I think that they all are, which is weird based on the on the on my experience opening up the hatch in the standard Prius or as Casey likes to call it the Prius without a plug. Uh there's the the, the center part of the rear platform is actually raised up about three inches, and there's a gap on each side. Hmm. And that's all space for what appears to be a spare tire. In other words, they've raised the floor. Yeah, I, and I'm not. I'm not sure. So, because a lot of the doors didn't come with a spare tire. So right, right, right. Which, is, but there's like room for it. So the question, so, I don't. It's just. Uh, it's odd to me that they would raise that floor. I, I heard that the larger battery pack was going completely under the back seat. That is what Toyota is saying. Absolutely. But then why is that floor? 
three inches higher. This is stuff that John so that on the Japanese. So that on the Japanese model, you can use your solar panel that you don't get anywhere else in the world. Well, you do, but not with the power export feature. With the power export uh, for charging what the main battery, your lawnmower or, or whatever. Yeah, oh, you, where they got the okay. gap in the window and you can roll it up and like, put the cord I, out. Run a cord I, out. Drive away. Yep. Yeah, that I want to like say a ridiculous that, method. that they're only shipping all-wheel drive to Canada too. Uh, oh, yeah. They say it snows there. <laughs> if I read, I heard the, that the press release correctly. <laughs> um, it, it's I, the, I find the, that hard to believe. Yeah, the the the, the problem. They might start is, that way, but they'll come up to try and save some money. Like, hey, you want a Prius in Canada for under whatever price? Oh, we took two two drive wheels away. Yeah, a lot Enjoy. of times they they cut stuff out of Canadian models to make them more price attractive. Uh, but it also is easy for logistics if they all are this way and they don't have to worry about that part of it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, and honestly, I mean, even in even in Florida, all-wheel drive is uh, is nice because it drains so damn much. Having a little more sure-footed car isn't a bad problem. Now, again, if that raises the price of the vehicle, I, I don't know. I mean, they can sell $70,000 Chungers, but apparently a $35,000 Prius is a sin. I, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, and again, I'm talking wildly because I have very, very few facts to deal with other than my tactical, ex tactile, not tactical, tactile experience of touching the car and sitting in it. And then, uh, um, yeah, that, I, that's I wanted to ask you, Russell, obviously yes, sir. you were, you were in front of it. You, uh, you were able to touch it, get inside of it. It, it appears to be a lot more lower to the ground. Two inches. Oh god! <laughs> I need to sell a lot of front bumpers. <laughs> it is two inches lower than its predecessor. Did you did you find it um, tougher to get in and get out of the car? Like, is it is it? Are is you it... calling me a fat old man? Because you could just say that. Okay, <laughs> you could just say fat old man. How is your? Um, I didn't, but. I, I think one of the things that I said in the review that I wrote, the, the, the first review is that it's aggressively a sedan. Like it is a no apologies, lower than it used to be sedan. Like there is no bone Aggressive and given. sedan just really don't. <laughs> it, Still with a hatch though, right? It, it's, it's a hatch, but wait for it, Paul. Well, and there's everybody here, I guess, who's driven one. Uh, the Prius has always had a split rear window in the hatch, right? right? A sloping window and then a little tiny skinny one. Guess what's gone? Skinny one. Uh, hmm. So all of your rear view goes through that sloping view, which has compressed it a little bit. Uh, sitting inside of a building inside of a Prius, it seemed smaller. But until I actually drive it, I don't know, you know how that works. I'm going to guess that somebody at Toyota drove it before they made that call. But yeah, if it's lower than, than the split, like well, that's fine. But if it's at that top window and the split is just gone, then that's kind of a lame. Two inches lower. It mm. it feels tight inside. I, I will say that. That was the... the um, it, it looked wider in the rear than the regular Prius. It is. It's it's a little bit wider. Um, it's a show, little show bit... Show title is Prius Innuendo Galore. <laughs> is, is Prius in the what? In you window galore. Oh, <laughs> fair enough. I, I will. I will do that. Um, it, it's it's a little bit uh, longer. I'm not sure how much, and I'm I don't remember the width. It's minimal, but yeah, it, like yeah. everything in in sedan world, it's gotten a little bigger. And and I'm not a fan of the low profile tires. I mean, they look cool, but if they don't have a spare, their customers are gonna be pissed off getting a lot of flats. You know, there's their optional four hundred dollars dealer installed accessory. I'm, I'm just I, saying shit. Don't believe me. <laughs> yeah, as I have told uh, um, some of my friends at Toyota, uh, you know, thankfully for me, I have friends like all of you and like John B, so that I can go to someone really smart and ask them about what do you think of this, what do you think of this, and John and I corresponded fairly extensively. And uh, yeah, it turns out heat John's, at least in Canada, one of the tire sizes is not even a standard tire. It's like, I don't even know where you're going to get the tire. Hmm. So it's like, uh, gotta go to your dealer, get some profit. Uh, I'm sorry. Got to go to your dealer, get some profit for that weird tire. It'll probably change. 
I, I don't well, know. As, as if they sell them, they'll be in the aftermarket, just like the 12 volt battery in Prius has always been a stupid proprietary size, but you can go to AutoZone and buy one now because mm -hmm. uh, there's enough stupid proprietary Prius batteries out there. Yeah. <laughs> you throw enough proprietary things out there, it becomes a standard. Oh, lead yeah. in for a later topic. I, I don't, <laughs> yeah, I actually, don't know. The Subaru crappy Crosstrack hybrid uses a Prius 12 volt battery as one of their three batteries in the car. Seriously, well, they, yeah. they have that Toyota tie in though, so I can see them reaching in that parts bin and say, oh, We'll take this one. Sure. Well, uh, I, that's all I got on the uh, the, the was, Prius. Was it a busy uh, a busy affair? Were there a lot of people there? The, they have good shrimp cocktail. No. <laughs> I, Are they going to be able I, to keep the wheels on this one? I was <laughs> really, really there just to work and did not. I had no alcohol and no food, no. so. I, I had a diet coke. Um, I'm sorry, Mark. What did you ask? You? Was was it was it busy? Was there a was lot busy? of people? Yeah. This this calls for a very subjective opinion on my part, so I'm going to offer it, but I'm going to put it with the caveat that maybe I'm just an asshole. You were there um, during the press portion, not the public portion, right? I, th there was no public portion when I was there. Okay. Yeah. So right. this is this happened the night last Wednesday, the night before the LA Auto Show opened at a private venue, very strictly controlled by Toyota, who got in. And I was there was definitely people there and a good amount, but I was kind of shocked that at one time was one of Toyota's most celebrated vehicles. Yeah, it was attendance was, shall we say, not room busting. Uh, and, are they going to be able to keep the wheels a lot on of those, A lot of those press events, you find that uh, uh, the people that are there, especially YouTube personalities, uh, they try to make a quick segment in front of the vehicle. And and, uh, and and there was like, there's all these other people clawing all over the car and this guy standing in front <laughs> of it trying to talk about it as people are walking in front of the camera and everything else. Can, can I admit just since I already have admitted that I'm an asshole, I'm the asshole that if like I like your show, I will stay out of your shot. If I don't, I will get in that damn thing and photo bomb the living hell out of you. I will sit in the car. I will stick my butt in your camera. Yeah, you know, pull your pants down. Do a plumber's butt bend over. I, I will. Oh, no. I, I probably won't do that, oh. Paul. Actually, but uh, only on the only OnlyFans page. <laughs> yeah, that's my OnlyFans page, which I invite you all to visit me at uh, <laughs> OnlyFans slash Plumber Crack. Yeah, it's uh, um, yeah, there, yeah. There's there was a lot the of that there. I mean, Toyota certainly worked that whole like influencer crowd very hard. That's definitely one of their goals. Yeah. So, and there was no small amount of that there, which is why, again, I, and, and so, you know, they do this private reveal and of course it's, uh, it's invitation only. I don't know who they invited. I don't know what percentage of their people showed or not. Uh, but there was not a, there wasn't, it wasn't an overwhelming journal presence, journalism presence there. So now somebody from Toyota may correct me and go, oh no, it was actually 85% journalists. Okay, <laughs> I'll own that, I guess. But it it didn't feel like like I'd been to other debuts, and it mm -hmm. just did not feel like that in any way, especially yeah. a new generation. Well, and what's the criteria for journalists now? You have a YouTube channel. Hey, asshole! <laughs> <laughs> That's like the fourth time I've said the word asshole on this show, and we're <laughs> ten minutes in. But yeah, no, I mean, well, and I guess. The YouTube criteria, let's just focus a little bit. Do you talk about cars or are you doing makeup tutorials and you've got 5 million viewers and they want those eyeballs, which is what everybody has angled towards for the last. But if the makeup, years. if the makeup lady has got, or if the makeup person has got 10 million viewers and they just happen to mention that they, uh, they drive a Prius so they don't have to worry about uh, testing their makeup on animals or something. And there could be a small tie in that might be worth I, it for them. It might be. Yeah. I or, or they could be making a political donation to the ultra right wing. Uh, throw it down, and uh, that'll also be good for Toyota, uh, based on previous uh, donations. Well, <laughs> speaking of ultra right wing, let's go to our next topic. Thank you for that. Casey. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what is Lonnie Musk doing at Twitter? Oh my God! <laughs> All I can say is, yeah, I. You know what, Derek? That is an excellent drink. Every time I say asshole, everybody has to take a drink. No. Um, Derek, you're gonna die, honey. 
<laughs> don't die, Derek. Just don't take one for this team, please. Take one every other asshole. Yeah. <laughs> you'll, you'll, be, you'll be wasted, but it'll be alive. <laughs> so, anyway, that's all. You know what? I'm not going to belabor the, the, the Lonnie Musk thing and Twitter, other than it is uh, absolutely delightful to see just about every nasty thing that I've said come true in real time. Uh, now, I love Press. Twitter. And I hate I'm surprised to see how, how how my timeline hasn't changed unless I go to the homepage and start looking at stuff. Well, well Dollar Store Stark is. Uh... Yeah, there you go. <laughs> it's just wow. You know, I mean, I as as someone who went to school in Manhattan and didn't go to Ivy League, but at least went to a big private university with a lot of money um, behind it. I've been around rich people's kids. I've seen them. I've never been impressed by them. They were unimpressing me from when I was 10. Uh, and I grew up very unimpressed. And I'm actually impressed. I haven't seen anything this stupid in a really long time. And nobody wants to come out and just say, yeah, yeah this, this, is, this is complete idiocy. So go on ahead, Dollar Store Stock. Do your thing. Freak flag flowing. I mean, he, he, would, high. he would he would benefit by just letting them do their thing and shutting up and collecting a check. Uh, but he, but he has to go in there and stir the pot. But he can't. Constantly. It's not even stir the pot. He's got to take the pot, open up a, and cherry bomb destroy in it. the pot. <laughs> yeah. He reinvented the pot by throwing like you know just a flat sheet of metal on flames and pretend he can make soup in it. That's dollar store Stark for you right there. So. Um, yeah, still, there's still it's potential gonna... there, but man, oh no, you gotta, you gotta have people. You gotta have people using it, and then they scaring away a lot of people. You're, you're so adorably hopeful. <laughs> there's no hope there. There's nothing. There's, there's no potential there. It's gonna go until it crashes into a wall, but um, it's gonna be ugly because just well, he can sell it again once he gets it fixed. <laughs> He's, he's not going to be able to sell that. He's not going to make, gonna make any money. Yeah. He's not going to make any money, he's but you know, they, can, yeah. they can fix the technology. Yeah. There's nothing to fix. Right Ain't yeah. nobody yeah. buying this thing that advertisers are running away from. No, by, by, by the time it hits that point of, my God, would you just shoot it in the head? It's hard. It just put it out of everyone's misery. Uh, it's not going to get much of a price, but the, the brand itself, when I say 8chan, I hope not. I really hope you not. May not I, I you may not know what goes on in 8chan, but you have this shudder that goes through your spine. You feel like a chill. Your stomach gets a little nauseated, and you have no idea why. You've never been near 8chan. You haven't even, you may be past the door that led to 4chan, and you said, nah, that stinks over there. I don't want to go there. 8chan is way off in the back end of a darkened hallway. There's flames. There's demons crawling out of the walls. Things are oozing and writhing all over the place. You don't want to go there. So I say 8chan, and you know not to. And Twitter, headed to 8chan lane. We'll see how it goes. But, uh, oh, well. Choices were made. They were poor. Have any now of you left do... Twitter since this uh, purchase? Oh, God, no. I Look, <laughs> I, live, I live in reality. Yeah. And somebody was saying, well... You know, what about we need places safe? And I looked at him and I said, like, I am a black female. <laughs> I have never been anywhere safe. Right. <laughs> what are you talking about? Where am I right. supposed to go? I got my citizenship because I sat down and I said, let's see, fascist America, what happens? Well, there's nowhere safe in the whole entire world. What am I supposed to do? Might as well get my citizenship and put in my ability to fight against fascism. And it's the same thing here. It's like, there's nowhere safe for me. What are you talking about? Where is the safety you you people dream of, of things being? It, that's a mysterious word to me because there's no safety. Um, and, and we rarely have the option to just get up and leave like some other yeah. folks do. And we, we always we will always stick out. So there's well, nothing we can do about it. So we just have to deal with it. I have I'm experiencing nothing more different than usual. A little less spam bots. <laughs> No. Not really? <laughs> really? Not really? Just a hair less spam no, bots no. and another and like Elon million dollar whatever fake. Mr. Crap. Musk hath done nothing good. Oh. There is nothing good except my bias against people with more money than God given sense. 
um, is increasing. And I can't tell if that's a bad thing or a good thing. And my role as professional sarcasm provider, I am definitely on it. And he oh, you mean so, like how Bezos was telling people it. how to save money this morning? <laughs> how to save money? Yeah, he was saying don't buy a new car, uh, hold off on your large purchases till we find out what's going on with this stuff. It's just, dear, dear. I feel sad for him because it's like, does no one love you enough to tell you to shut up? Sometimes what you need is a person in your life. Not Elon. That goes for both of these guys, Elon actually. Elon and just will cuff you upside <laughs> the back of your head, take your phone away and say, you shut the fuck up, you moron. You are, <laughs> like, give it five fucking minutes without your friggin' input on every topic under the sun because you are a doofus. Sit down, take the meth pipe out of your mouth. Maybe eat not some only, oatmeal and go to bed. Not only is he the president of the hair club for men, he's also a client. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and, and a dragon. At some point, I believe those plugs are just going to say, I am done with this and just pull themselves out of his scalp and walk off and go find some other head to sit on. <laughs> so I, I wish him well. I wish I didn't have to see every foolish thing. And I wish the fact that his money and the power that comes along with it in his roles in society didn't make his cozying up to neo-Nazis absolutely something we have to pay attention to because everything you you include in the newsletter these are people i am very familiar with i know who they are okay. i know why they are dangerous and they are and i don't say and, this lightly evil yeah. um and it, it, it's uncomfortable when he goes tee -hee -hee, they said something funny and you're like that's yeah it and may be funny but that's how they chilling. lure in the children it's is, chilling is what, the, what they're doing yeah. because we just got off a massacre of gay people in the club just that was that was not even a full 48 hours ago okay and things are escalating very quickly and i i don't know if any um i'm pretty well casey i'm pretty sure you've seen it i posted some of the shooters uh the the shooter's father's credentials shall we say on my twitter feed and i mean the the weirdest thing that you're going to see is you can go back and you can go look at the pulse nightclub club shooting which was not that long ago and right. it was far more at least quiet hateful you can be hateful but be silent right they're not being silent not they are you, you not even. There. Yeah. They're not expressing yeah. a minute of regret. There's no pause. There's not the sense of even. Eh, maybe I should just be, you know, just maybe drink something, go have a drink, get off the log off, and let let it die down before I start up with the hate speech. It is really rolling right into it. And I'm I'm not a I'm not a I'm not a historian. I am just somebody who both was a straight A history student and loves history. And I can I can check out a pattern of human society and it's not headed in a good direction that says um, safety. So that's that's the only reason to pay attention to, to Mr. Musk. Um, but uh, that's- but You were also the one who showed the, uh, or they were trying to minimize the, the number of deaths, like only. Oh. Up to the 10 only, people, only, right? Only yeah. 10. Only 10 people. It's only 10 people who were who were killed and, and in the middle well, of it. A total and, of 20 and, and to celebrate the, the massacre at Club Q, today Lonnie brought back Marjorie Taylor Greene's personal account. Of course he did. Uh, that woman doesn't need well, that's have a the well, best, That's I'm, the best I'm way to... More, I'm know. far more concerned about him talking with Tim Pool of TimCast Sure. Uh, talking about how, well, you know, but then there are groomers. What? They're not groomers. Did this, what? And yet I can point you to what? There was at least two pastors in the past three days who were arrested for a child. Uh, Hundreds child of counts. Child endangerment. And two pastors. Okay. If, if, I, if I'm looking for a child groomer for people you shouldn't leave your children with, I can pretty much go to a child pastor and find one. Not all, but it's easier. Not all. I, I know we have to say not all. Um, actually, I'm going to say all of you because until I 
hear different and you start really policing the people in your midst. Uh, how, how about you aim some of that laser eye of accusation um, into the church? There's a reason why there's a whole damn parable about moats and beams. Mm -hmm. Y'all are all looking out there because there's, you know, people who were biologically born male or female who go, <clears throat> my spirit, my soul is something else and I'm going to live that truth. And yet inside your churches where you don't want to go, the darkness inside the sepulcher, there's a reason why Christ talked about white and sepulchers. And a lot of people don't know this, but I used to teach Bible and I was a Bible quiz master. So I am very good with my religious studies. There's a reason why Jesus called you white and sepulcher, because you look good on the outside and inside is death and decay. And that's what's happening right here. I stand by that. No one will ever get me to take that back because the churches need all you religious people. Uh, no, 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 no. You ignore, you leave the LGBTQ people alone. Ain't that inside. So, but I don't want to rant too much on that because it'll get me upset. That's okay. In fact, let's go to our next story. Thank you, Georgia for saying that's why I didn't have to. Um, Paul has a story about our, our friend our, Hydrogen. Our um, friend Hydrogen! <laughs> Are we our back friend, to Hydrogen is going to um, save us all? You know, we bash Hydrogen for cars because it's just not practical. And um, I don't think it's ever going to catch on in cars. But I heard an interesting podcast about um, Hydrogen and airplanes, which on the surface seems kind of crazy, but I listened to the podcast and I, I think this company might have a have a plan. Um, they're called Universal Hydrogen. Uh, I guess we'll put a link in the show notes to yes. the podcast, How I Built This, which is actually a very good podcast on entrepreneurs and cool new stuff. But this company claims that they can take a mid-sized plane for commuter regional routes and power it with hydrogen. Um, You'll have to listen to the podcast to get the whole spiel. But they're looking at, in the next couple of years, actually having planes available that will run on hydrogen fuel cells. They will fill the, or they'll, the tanks will be cargo containers that they can easily transport to the airport initially. Um, they've got to figure out how to get cheap green hydrogen, which, you know, where there's, well, where there's lots of free electricity, that's not a problem. Right. Um, you know, and, and they go into how they can do that. But, um, once all of these, like California makes all the cars electric and other countries, the bulk of carbon emissions is going to be aircraft. So they've got to figure out how to minimize the carbon in aircraft. So give this uh, show a listen and maybe hopefully one day in the next couple of years, we'll be able to take a ride in a hydrogen plane, not a, not an international continental flight, but you know, the two, 300 mile flight, which is quite common in America, especially in Europe, uh, European flights are all three, 500 miles. So, um, yeah. intriguing proposition. Well, that's, that's something I'm definitely going to take a listen at because that is right up my alley, especially when we consider, uh, the logistics costs of shipping food supplies and around, and we've already run into that. Um, through the COVID pandemic, the issues with logistics, and it's going to get worse. So definitely interesting to hear. Another connection with hydrogen, <clears throat> excuse me, is that um, uh, Germany, uh, who's currently in an energy crisis themselves uh, with mm -hmm. uh, uh, of, uh, boycotting Russia. Russian uh, natural gas, um, have decided that they're going to switch to LNG. So they've been quickly trying to build floating refineries off the coast of a number of German ports uh, and building infrastructure to get the piping out to those portable ports uh, so that they can take LNG, convert it to the, the normal gaseous state, and then pump it through their existing pipes into German homes and, and industry. What was interesting is that it's a two-phase plan. They, they want to keep all the piping but in the future, their thought is to get more green hydrogen and use those pipes for the transportation of hydrogen to those industries uh, and those uh, consumers. Mm -hmm. So their, their thought, their long thought is, is hydrogen as well. Uh, and they're going to be using the same infrastructure that they have 
for natural gas uh, so that they can use the asset that they already have. Um, that that's going to require work. a lot of green natural or green uh, hydrogen. Uh, and it's not going to be change that can be made overnight, but that's, that is the country's plan at this point. Yeah. Uh, one, one industry that keeps talking about hydrogen uh, is maritime. And what I like, I, I like what I've seen where they're actually going back to, uh, they're doing hybrids, but with sail. So, so wind mm -hmm. power uh, rather than, uh, I guess they realize that, that this hydrogen thing, if it works, is going to take longer to implement than just putting up a couple either fabric or rigid sails. Yeah, if they, if they can figure out how to generate the hydrogen, store it, ship it, um, and generate it from clean green, you know, hydropower, uh, wind power, however, you know, geothermal. Um, the cool thing is once you run it through the fuel cell, it's just water vapor comes out. Yeah. So you can, you can combust it too, but it destroys the heck out of your engine in short order. Yeah. 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 But Patrick, like, like, like uh, for example, if, if a country like Iceland who's got unlimited geothermal power could crack water into clean hydrogen, put it on these tankers and send them to Germany, you know, that could solve the problem for, for a while at least. Mm. You know, whether or not that's the best long-term solution, we'll see. Yeah, you would want local generation so you don't have to do all that transport because right. that just lowers the overall efficiency yeah. significantly. Mm. But, and, but they have unbelievably cheap electricity. Yeah. Well, Patrick, you were about to say that you didn't think that was going to work. Oh, yeah. So the, the stuff that Mark mentioned, um, when you have an infrastructure that's set up for methane or propane or, or something like that, then to try to later uh, use, use that for hydrogen. Um, hydrogen is a smaller molecule. It has um, brittlefication, uh, so it will actually cause cracking and other problems. They try to get around that often by keeping it to like 10% or something like that. But then that causes problems because the hydrogen sets on top. And if you have some branch, then, then uh, like one that goes up, all the hydrogen is going to go that way. And now you're way more than 10%. And then whatever's consuming it, um, hydrogen just does not combust at as high a temperature. So say you have 10% um, mix of hydrogen. Well, and you're, you're running a, uh, who knows, like a, a water heater. Well, that only gives you about that 10% only gives you about 2% of the heat energy out, which means you have to burn about 8% more overall, which defeats the whole purpose of putting in 10%. So you really only get 2% savings. Anyway, th there's um, the whole idea of a hydrogen economy has failed. But, but Paul's point initially was, here's one niche case where it might really work. And you have, uh, you know where the fueling spots are, they're at the airports. You can say we support route A to B, and now we're going to add C, and now you can go A to C, and then you can control it, and you keep the vehicles. Unlike when we were talking about cars, you, to, to make it work in America, you'd have to put in 100,000 fueling stations, and that's just not something you can do with a flip of a switch. But and, you can put it in 100 airports and make a huge improvement. Exactly, yes. So because yeah. it's isolated and controlled, this might actually work. And, um, and you can also tailor it like paul said maybe it's 300 miles or 400 miles or 500 miles and anything smaller than that you can do battery electric anything larger than that you can use conventional fuels and maybe some of the uh plant-based fuels or some other thing to help reduce the em emissions there until the hydrogen technology gets better and then you can do um coast to coast and then intercontinental uh and and that can be what takes over those long-range flights eventually so so there is a place for it it's just the whole hype of just oh it's going to solve everything was was wrong and was way it, you can see this on the hype curve right um there, there's this time where you get into the before you get into the trough of disillusion, dis, disillusionment where you have this massive like oh it's going to solve everything and then everybody thinks it's awesome and then it never lives up to those we're, we're sort of in the winter of this now and and hopefully coming out of it with just the right solutions and not all the hype but but it, it, could, it could work well in, in... i mean uh you know, was it 12 years ago when the first Tesla Roadster came out? Who thought they would be the largest automaker by market cap, you know, in 10 yeah. years? So, well. Wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so, it, it, if you look at, if if you look at some of the other... Tesla, they did really change the automotive industry. 
yes. Yeah. yes. But, but like if you look at some of the electric uh, planes in Europe, uh, they they have to choose their their airports carefully because the the, the airplane airports that they can land these airplanes in uh, don't all have the proper electrical service to uh, to recharge them. Right. So. Uh, at least, at least with this, uh, if you end up landing in the wrong airport, you can at least get a container uh, logistically shipped out there and then get it back in the air. Right. One of, one of the things this company talks about is having hydrogen tanks built into the shape of the cargo boxes that regular planes use so they can move them around to other airports if they need to. So um, at least as an interim step until there's an infrastructure. So yeah, we'll see. It, it was a cool idea, and and they've got buckets of money behind them. They've got yeah, it's all that eighty-five million build. dollar uh, funding. Yeah, they're, they're building a factory in New Mexico for two hundred fifty million dollars or something. They're converting a couple of um, turboprop plane platforms to run on hydrogen fuel cells. So let's see what happens. We'll see. Let's well, let's go to Patrick. For our next story about low cost renewable power. Yes. So I thought this would be a cool story to share. And it comes from uh, PV Magazine, USA.com. And um, this is just a proposal. So I won't spend a whole lot of time on it. But the idea is to have a high voltage DC mac macro grid, not a micro grid, a macro grid. So if you're familiar with the uh, Pacific DC intertie that goes from up here uh, in the Columbia Gorge down to LA. So, so um, dams right here in my neighborhood are powering Russell's house right now. <laughs> and uh, so this, this connection that we have um, allows uh, clean energy to be from, from the, the dams up here to be sent down to Los Angeles. And the cool thing about this setup is that uh, it's it's very efficient as far as uh, transmission lines go, and they do that. I, it's DC. What DC? That's crazy. You're not you don't for high I voltage DC wasn't trans efficient. Uh, so it turns huh. out that if you do things at, at crazy high voltages like uh, 500 kilovolts, that the electrical properties are very different, and um, AC transmission only uses what's called the skin effect on a, on a wire, but DC at that level uses the entire thing. And uh, so you have lower resistance, lower inductions, lower capacitance at those voltages. And anyway, the, the point of it is like, there are very different demands in these two regions. For example, in the winter, people up here are using electrical heating, uh, especially as more people get heat pumps. And there's not a lot of use in LA in the winter of things like air conditioners, but in the summer, it's the opposite, right? So this allows this electricity to be shared and to be moved where it's needed most. And this idea is to have this, a similar type of high voltage DC overlay over the entire country that allows um, Oklahoma wind to be shipped to Chicago when it's needed. And uh, when you have a, a grid like this where everything has the ability to share, and you, you have um, solar in Arizona that's going to power homes in um, Missoula, Montana in the winter. I mean, it's just that there's, it gives you so much more options if you can move the electricity around. And this idea is to, that they would use existing right of way, put them underground and, uh, and connect the entire country with these high efficiency things that allow us to move electricity from where it's being generated to where it's needed uh, in a very efficient way. And I just thought this was a cool idea. And they even talked about having these off coast, off offshore lines as part of it. So uh, yeah, it was a neat idea. I wanted to see what you guys thought. Well, the, the map uh, system, they're gonna have to take Texas off of that completely because we know they're not gonna go for it. So right. they like to <clears> the, the lines will have to go completely around Texas. But other than that, it's a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yeah. Texas might not want to play, but they probably need it more than anybody. Uh, they, yeah, they've they learned. Do. Yes, yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how they deal with the municipality issue. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, figuring out, well, how do we, how do they get paid? But that's, that's really 
for um, administrators and legislators to work out now right. getting it, approvals. That is an important part of this. And, and they should look at, hey, this gives me more market for the stuff I generate. And this gives me more ability to buy uh, and arbitrage off of uh, what price is best. So, I mean, it, it offers the opportunity for better pricing and more profits for them. And hopefully greed will drive them to do what's right for other purposes. <laughs> yeah, uh, honestly, yeah. I think the one thing we're going to have to consider, um, probably, there's a lot of jurisdictional issues. And oh, that's yeah. probably where, that's really what's buzzing through my head, some jurisdiction questions. But it, it's it's interesting to see because we've been concentrating so much on microgrid stories. Mm -hmm. um, and most municipalities are looking at microgrids because they can only control what's within their boundaries. Mm -hmm. But yeah, and it's interesting to read this in relation to one of the other stories I have coming up later on. So if we if we're able to get to it. So yeah, it's this is a it's a good plan. Let's uh let's see if we can get it done. Yeah, it was even hard to say macro grid just because I you hear the word micro grid all the time and it was hard to push that one out of my head to say, no, I want to say this other one. <laughs> yeah, macro grid. We want a yeah. macro <laughs> Macro is big. That's macro my that's my the contribution future. to the discussion. Thank you. <laughs> um, let's go to Georgia mm -hmm. for, and I'm going to just, I'm going to repeat verbatim the headline that she has posted, the case against EVs. Yeah. Uh, I know. I'm just, I'm just shaking the table and kicking things over. I know. Uh -huh. uh, okay. But calm down. <laughs> We've talked about this before. <laughs> Every week. We we have talked about this before. We have brought it up. We absolutely love our EVs. And America, America is car culture. We are about the car. But we cannot resolve our transportation issues through personal vehicles. It is not just a personal purchase solution. And so um, this article is coming from, uh, this is. Uh-oh. Is that me? That's They're nice. coming for you, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> I know I said it. I finally, <laughs> finally <laughs> caused trouble. So this was um, coming from Euroactive and this is the Portuguese minister of Minister of Infrastructure and Housing, Pedro Nuno Santos. And when th this is to the Transport Research Arena Conference. And basically the discussion is, is that we're very focused on cars and what people are trying to do. And to a certain extent, even us, we, we do focus on replacing combustion cars with electric cars, but we're going to retain the same problems. Congestion the amount of traffic, unsustainable amounts of accidents, and the conflict between public living space and public driving space. And so instead of doing, well, what we did in the macro, because when we're talking about a macro grid, we're looking at a, putting, putting in all the good solutions into a basket and building a network of power to resolve a system. And we also, when we're dealing with our transportation sustainability issues, we have to look at all of them. And I often tell people I have no idea why, why what drives us has us on here. Because I, although I love cars and I do love EVs and things like that, I focus on my little my little niche things, which is public transportation or small personal vehicles that don't necessarily need to be on the road. They can be, you know, EV bikes or scooters something that reduces the amount of traffic that we have to have where we have cars on the road because we can't have a solution to our problems of of um of ice cars by just replacing them with ev cars because i now i get to see someone with an electric um roadmaster or you know electric hummer electric hummer and it's yeah. one person in a massive ass vehicle being a big obnoxious 
electric massive ass vehicle when literally could you just get on a freaking bike and ride or take the bus you know providing solutions and so my this case does not say no to evs but it does say that while we're looking if we're looking at it just as the solution to to transportation problems is evs we got to expand holistically. If we want to find a solution to ICE cars, yes, the solution is alternative transportation vehicles, um, EVs, things like that. We've got, we, we can solu- solve that. But when we're talking about the whole problem with cars and traffic and congestion and public space, we've got to have holistic solutions that take all of the good ideas and put them into one basket and plan and build accordingly. Because um, I can definitely say as a person who's now lived in California for almost or if not more time than when I lived in New York, growing up in New York, uh, California was definitely built with the car in mind. Most new places are always built with cars in mind to the point where some places don't even have sidewalks you can walk on. Which means the only thought they had is people will get on the co- get on the freeway in their car and go from place to place. And that stinks. And it's not going to be any better if all we think about is just, well, people will get into their EVs and they'll drive everywhere. So I just wanted to throw that out for people to consider because um, this this, uh, this show is, what drives us isn't just about the cars. It's about the sustainability. And I think, I thought it was good to introduce that as a discussion. Thoughts? Oh yeah, You're right. I, I've got mm. a ton of them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thoughts about EVs? <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so I, I completely agree that EVs do not solve congestion and other problems. I, I've I've um, spent some time in Europe, and they have some very walkable cities, and it was awesome. Uh, I could just go out of the hotel room I was in walk around the city. There are entire blocks that are uh, traffic free, no cars. They, they, and uh, it's great. In fact, here in Beaverton downtown, when COVID hit, they blocked off some streets, put outdoor seating for the restaurants so people can spread out more. And a lot of those have stayed, which is really cool. And uh, there's parts of uh, Southeast Portland that have done that. We talked about the bike bus uh, uh, that uh, there's a a teacher that leads a bunch of students uh, on their commute to work. Yeah, and that, that, that stuff is all really cool. EVs were not meant to solve those problems. That's public policy about where you allow cars and where you don't allow cars. And, and we as a society could absolutely do better in that space. That's not the problem EVs were trying to solve. So oh, to say, oh, but EVs cause this problem. Like, no, no, no. That problem existed long before them. EVs are not an attempt to solve that at all by any means. EVs are about emissions. And, and so... I think two things are being conflated here that, that don't go together. You can say this is, EVs are a chance to reinvent and do better. Okay, I'll, I'll agree with that, but I think you're kind of still conflating them and stretching. The thing that, that put me over the line with this article that was posted in here is that the, the um, um, Nuno Santos was spouting some FUD, and it's just wrong. I mean, here's, here's the part that particularly uh, I want to read this just so I get it right. Um, He criticized the term zero emission cars, suggesting that electric cars are not as green as presented when you measure the entire life cycle basis rather than solely the tailpipe emissions. He pointed out the research indicating that electric cars may take up to nine years to offset their CO2 from production. And then he says, prolonging the life of our current generation of combustion vehicles may be greener than a rapid uptake of EVs. And that's all just bullshit. That is totally wrong. There's there's, there's no way... And so once you, you you start with this credible problem, you start blaming EVs, and then you start out EV FUD. Now this is just an, an EV attack that was disguised as a legitimate concern, and it's not. It's just EV bashing. Plus, you can have one EV bus take off ten gas cars off the road. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Right. I, we kind of bought into this, or we kind of made this problem. Kind of us EV advocates who wanted electric cars. And I'm going to say not EVs. I'm going to say electric cars Mm -hmm. because electric cars, electric cars, range, range, range. If we had been more, I don't know, 
diverse in our approach if we'd and I don't I don't I don't I think we have been to an extent, but again, you know, what can you go buy right now that's electrified? You can go buy long range cars that are usually pretty expensive and electric e bikes. That's about it. Well, you know, short range, short range is, cars when they're when they're in stock. I, I was just gonna say that the thing is I was I found some of my old pictures from sustainability fairs going back to the early two thousands, which kind of I should say that uh, yeah it does make sense i'm on this show which are the hobbyists though we're converting mm -hmm. so many cars so sure, many vehicles yeah. such a broad and dynamic range of transportation alternatives were being come up with before it became an industry and i think right. that's the problem and the industry sells a solution and they sell it with bumper stickers and as you know we going back to the hydrogen discussion as the global solution is one thing and it's like it's not really the people who have been doing this passionately from before there was companies doing it for us it's really once you bounce it up and the the numbers become bigger and bigger and bigger of making these things and it becomes a business and it's an industry and you and then, and it requires policy. People condense the the argument and the options and the vision to very narrow single points, and we yeah. lose <clears throat> that difference. I, I agree somewhat, but I would also say that those hobbyists that started the EV movement and started to produce uh, Frankenstein vehicles that would switch uh, from internal combustion to electric in different ways different ranges uh were you know a lot of them were short range yeah. uh niche vehicles that would work for that particular owner or inventor mm -hmm. um the problem with that is that that just gave people a taste for it you couldn't get mass adoption with those type of niche projects i know that patrick for example had a mm -hmm had an S10 that was one of those niche projects, even though it was produced by a, a larger group. But uh, you could ask Patrick, you could ask Casey and myself, if you had the choice of staying with that niche vehicle with low mileage or jumping into one that would give you 250, 300 miles of range, we would have in an instant 10 years oh, ago. Sure. Like it's, 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 I think sustainability problem is that is is the whole manner of how we live today. Many of us live in subdivisions that are disconnected from any type of public transit realistically or are so far away uh, from the main centers that you're traveling to that it becomes unrealistic to take public transit, to transfer, to take different forms. But as Patrick has mentioned, as you have mentioned, Georgia, by living in New York City, if you're in a scenario where it's densely populated and then everything becomes walkable or bikeable or transit is easy, but a lot of us don't live in those type of situations. A lot of us have purchased real estate that's outside of those bounds. And, and we are kind of confined by our geography to mm -hmm. choose certain ways to transport around. So it's, it's not just as easy as saying, let's set up some new public transit routes because Everyone has to move to those lanes or close to those new transport lanes to make it viable for everyone. Yeah. Well, and also there's weather, right, Mark? Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You couldn't ride an e bike six months of the year. No. Well, three months, definitely not three months. Yeah. yeah. Some grits, <laughs> <laughs> depending on how hardcore you are. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so there's no one size fits all, and um, right, it's multi pronged, multi faceted. Yeah, we recently bought a Chevy Spark EV. It's only got about sixty miles of range, and it gets driven five days a week. And uh, you know, it's it's a great little EV, uh, and uh, for the niche we use it in, it works awesome. I'm not going to ever drive that uh, cross country. It's just not, you know, we'll take something else. Right. And there's no point in it that, but, yeah. but everything doesn't, I noticed, uh, again, friend of the show, John Volker, a man who I love and respect, but was on his electrify America's charges don't work. This is the problem with EVs, blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, not everybody every week is going to goddamn grandma's house, 300 miles away in their electric car. That Except not tomorrow. The... <laughs> Except tomorrow. Right. And I get it. Like, oh, isn't it, isn't it a wonderful, like little think piece for the green journal to write? Not John, this other person. 
uh, um, you know, oh, EVs don't work. Uh. Oh, Christ. Do we always have to throw yeah, out the baby a one size the fits all. We don't need exactly. a one size fits all vehicle. Yeah, I mean, we, that's we why just... that's why you got these people who have a pickup truck for the for the one time uh, per purchase cycle that they're gonna help a friend move or they're gonna purchase some wood or or get a new mattress or something. Yeah, I have friends who actually have an old an ancient pickup truck. It's an old ice vehicle, but they keep it because the circle of friends all borrow it. We all borrow yeah. their truck. <laughs> so not because they're. I mean. For full disclosure, I just bought a house uh, that makes such that's such a very confusing sentence. Um, <laughs> wow. uh, I thought you lived in California. That's not legal there, is it? <laughs> uh, I just murdered a few people. Okay. Um, no. <laughs> Surprisingly good pay. The uh, <laughs> one way to do it, really. The, the the issue with buying a house, I didn't understand the amount of things once you get to the house. Then you have to get more things to the house, even after mm -hmm. you move your things to the house. And then you got to go shopping for more things. And I'm really sick of buying and lifting things at this point. And there's more stuff to do. Um, so Community Truck has been here and Community Truck will be back. So it's their house. It's over at their place. And they bring Community Truck and we do things in Community Truck. <laughs> car sharing before it was an app <laughs> yeah it really yeah. is and it's like that's what every of my every one of my friends who has a truck literally has some 1980s truck that seems to be held together by communal good wishes duct tape and some spit and uh <laughs> and we drive that around say that like it's a, a bad thing oh. in a 50 mile radius but uh, in yolo to sacramento county and but they don't drive it regularly because they don't want to drive that because, you know, all of the reasons that we talk about. Mm -hmm. And even if they upgraded to, to an EV vehicle, they don't want to buy a truck EV. They don't want a bigger, heavier EV. They want an efficient, sustainable EV. And they're trying to live a more sustainable life. But there's a role that these these kind of cars do have. So I to me it's like we we people do try to get that one size fits all solution and everybody here is right both in the criticisms of what mr santa says because i don't agree that evs are not green and depending on the life of you know i i get the life cycle argument but that's not true stuff he said is not true but the overall issue is that we keep looking for a one size fits all solution when we actually need to have a multiple amount of basket of solutions mm -hmm. and we have to switch up and i mm -hmm. when i go into the city for work i don't drive into work but i do actually have to drive to where my express bus is right or to a park and ride or whatever yeah yeah right. and it and that's not more. Yeah. you exactly. know i you know i it means i drive a little bit more but i'm not adding to the congestion on the road mm -hmm. where it's really important the, the the 15 miles into into the city so yeah, you're all we're all right. It's just that it's too easy to understand that the criticisms that we might have of different parts of it does not mean that there's other good things that we have we can pull out. Now the problem is getting that to happen. I don't know in less than a hundred years, but <laughs> hey, yeah, it'll get there. Oh, we still have a planet to save. I wonder if anybody's ever. Um, uh thought about the idea of building a car free city from like have the whole place designed for, for, with that in mind cars have to park on the outskirts the whole inner area if, if the city was designed intentionally with that in mind that would be an interesting place to see how that experiment goes only in russia comrade <laughs> no, I think, I I've, heard, like, I've heard modern places where they've where they started yeah, talking they about it. i don't know if they've implemented yeah the um i mean there's the road diet program which um the city of davis adapted a version of the road diet concept for their downtown area. Um, the, but they, the way how they've developed their downtown means it's a congested nightmare. So I practice a road diet by never going to the downtown at all because it's just <laughs> problem too crowded. Solved. It's too crowded. <laughs> problem solved. That's my solution as well. That's the, the downtown diet. diet. That is. Yeah. And then New York City, um, they have car-free areas that they've done exactly what you're talking about, Patrick. They've Open, and this was pre-pandemic, where they opened up the streets, made them sitting 
public spaces for mm-hmm. dining, for resting and just enjoying the atmosphere. And they've kept it that way because it's, it, in, it improves the overall feeling of the city. So I don't think we're ever going to have a completely car free city because until transmet and um, Derek, I, Derek and chat. Yeah. I got the transporter joke. I'm going to, I'm going to one up you with a doctor who transmit request because <laughs> I want to transmit and I've always wanted to transmit because if I can just step into a booth and be where I need to be, this sounds awesome. So if I can't have a mage portal, yes, I am that nerdy. Um, <laughs> give me a transporter or a transmit. I would love to have that. I'm all for it. So, but yeah, until we have that, we're going to have to have some form of method because restaurants need to get their shipments, uh, clothing stores, <laughs> tiendas, necesitas, ropas. So that's what we've got. We've got to have these people there and we've got to have trucks and we've got to have a certain level of transportation, but definitely declaring areas, car-free zones. I think that's been very successful and it's worked. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, unfortunately we are way over time this week. <laughs> And we still have other things to talk about, which means we'll have more to talk about next week. Let's do some shout outs and go home because I know at least one of us is still at work. Paul Gruzik, let's start with you. Um, Thanks to everybody who gave up their Thanksgiving Eve to tune us in and we appreciate you. And uh, for those of you in Colorado, if your hybrid car or EV breaks, uh, Give us a look at boulderhc.com. There you go. Thank you so much, Paul. Uh, Mr. Connor. Hello. So I'm with the Oregon Electric Vehicle Association. We were talking about conversions earlier. If you want to do a conversion, I know a lot of folks who've done that, and they can give you some <laughs> tips and pointers. Um, <laughs> yeah, Paul can too. Yeah, I'm sure. If uh, Have you ever worked on any conversions, Paul? Yeah, <laughs> but they're they're challenging because yeah, everyone's all, different and <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, a uh, good time. So and I also blog occasionally at carswithgorge.net. You can see that URL right up there. Check it out. Thanks a lot. Have you ever converted anything, Mr. Three Prong Power? <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. <laughs> Casey Green, what's going on in your world? Uh, moving so i'm gonna get okay. back to that good night you can, you oh. can catch us oh, at, man. Uh, i'm so at sorry the, <laughs> right i yeah youtube.com slash casey green or at casey green on youtube um yes <laughs> <laughs> so now now like i said we get to we get to go and try and and do uh uh the superchargers at night uh on, on a very popular night <laughs> for the trailer there you go. Yep. Tactile, tactile. Thank you, Pat. I, I like that. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Coglin. I want to say to everyone in the Northeast, uh, Central Washington area, to watch out for Casey because he's going to have a trailer that he can't disconnect <laughs> and he's going to be blocking superchargers. So have your patience with you, please, <laughs> so that we can have Casey next week. But uh, other than that, please, uh, while you're here, press that thumbs up button. Give us a subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, That really helps us out, and we would certainly appreciate it. You can find us through the week if you want to connect with what drives us uh, by looking at all the socials and just looking looking up what drives us. That's It's as easy as that. And hopefully, if Russell gets some of that information from Toyota, we'll get some of that posted. He doesn't think he's going to get it, but hopefully, hopefully, we'll be able to share that when it comes in. We, Russell, will we just want to talk about the plugless Prius. <laughs> we will definitely be able to share that if and when. Uh, and yeah. And for now, if I may sneak in a plug, um, do go to our channel. That's uh, youtube.com slash what drives us. Click on the new Prius review Ooh. and maybe even share it with some of your friends. Awesome. Okay? Let's, let's kick those numbers up a little bit. How's that? That's me saying, please share and watch our video thank you so much i did much. watch the video and i would recommend it uh, russell oh. had an early sneak peek at the the new prius and uh shared his thoughts on it and i thought it was pretty fair uh, yeah so yeah check it out that, that's very kind of you patrick you should have just I, I, shown more skin russell 
Oh, well. Only on the OnlyFans. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a whore. I'm a whore. <laughs> Ah, uh, and now I have to follow this up with Georgia McKenzie. <laughs> <laughs> and it was good to be black back. Missed you guys. Um, thank you all for staying with us. You've been here for an hour and 10 minutes. My God, what's wrong with you? I mean, thank you. And uh, it's been great to have you here. Oh, uh, yes, Derek, yo hablo un poquito de español y estoy muy estudiosa todas las noches en español. So there we go. And while you're at it, you've been here for this long, hit like, because <laughs> you do, you like us, you We'd really like, like us. And hit subscribe. When you hit like, it tells, the, tells YouTube, hey, throw this show into the algorithm. People find it to be engaging. And uh, subscribing just boosts our egos. And frankly, you don't want us to have a depressed meltdown on air, do you? Uh, although it could be entertaining. Um, when you're done here, you can head on over to Casey's channel because he's going to be tired and he's going to have baby fatigue and driving fatigue and moving fatigue. So he's going to have some really interesting reviews for you in the middle of all that. <laughs> I, I personally, this is the kind of train wreck that I want to watch. Hit like and subscribe while you're at it too. Because it's gonna be Casey baby. Meltdown goes viral. I couldn't get five spots, you people. <laughs> yeah, no way. <laughs> wow, that's going to be a supercharger review to die for. I want to see that. Meta- oh, in yeah. a metaphorical sense, stay safe. <laughs> yes. Casey. And plus babies. And although Mark Coughlin uh, is technically not a baby, he's kind of a babe. That's right. Go on ahead. Hit like, hit subscribe. This tes- The Tesla <laughs> must be lit with things to talk about because let's just say it's been a very interesting month or so for Tesla and uh, Tesla's cars and Tesla stock. So for a sane and level-headed approach, you want to talk to Mark and let him tell you what's going on. And don't forget, Patrick Connor over there, carsrecordings.net, because he's talking. You heard all that good stuff. He's talking about the energy. He's talking about the grid. You want more of that? Go on ahead. Follow him. Read his words. He's got things to say. And uh, Paul, what can I say? So go home, Paul. You're tired. <laughs> <laughs> so tired. You look so tired. Um, and if you're in Colorado, you happen to be in Boulder. Your car's uh, got a little thing. It's a hybrid. It's Snevy. Stop it, Boulder hybrid. Go on ahead. And if there's anything to buy, although probably there isn't, I'm pretty sure. Not a lot yet. Not, nothing on the lot yet? Okay, but if there is anything to buy, if you are hunting in the Boulder area or you're just in Colorado and you're hunting, I would say go on over there because he's a good dude and you only want to buy a used car from a good dude. That's true. So thanks for hanging with us and I'm going to bounce this back to Russell. Thank you so much, Georgia. I'm going to say thank you to everyone out there who's watched the show and uh, or listened to the show. Thanks very much. Of course, you're the reason we do the show. Our thanks to Michael Manring for his theme music. Visit him at manthing.com. My sincere thanks to Paul Guzik, Mark Coughlin, Patrick Connor, Casey Green, and Georgia McKenzie. I'm pointing to everyone on my screen. Will this make any sense once it's outputted to YouTube? Probably not. <laughs> Let's all have a little... <laughs> there we go. The thank you so Uh much tune in next week and find out what drives us